The buck stops with Crow. He's out protecting the farm from deer. We have our new series, Gundog Summer Boot Camp. I'm on the trail of HS2, which is cutting some of the best English hunting, shooting and fishing in half. I am devastated, just the thought of it is, is frightening. We've got news, we've got hunting YouTube. Welcome to Field Sports Britain. When it comes to row shooting, we usually leave it to Lord Lupton of Butteloshire. That's not to say that Crown Prince Crow can't shoot row, he just chooses not to as there aren't many on his ground. There is a potential gold medal buck with his name on it, however that ship may have sailed. Well we were going to go and see if we could uh, get a row buck at my place tonight, but we've had people in with dogs on some of the spring drilling and he seems to have disappeared, hopefully they haven't got him. And he's just a bit of pressure from getting chased a couple of times where well, he's just staying in the wood. So I thought I'd give him a bit of a break. So I've come up here, sitting in a high seat tonight. A bit breezy, not ideal, but it's just nice to get out. It's quite a nice bright evening now, so get out. We'll just have a quick walk down through the wood, then come back round. There's a high seat down the back here. We're going to sit in there for an hour or so. So we find ourselves on the ground where Andy gets a few days pheasant shooting in return for helping out with the cover crops. There are supposed to be quite a few here and doing enough damage for the numbers to be pushed back a bit. It's quite surprised we didn't see one down here on this nice bit of grass down this valley. I was expecting to see one down here. We often get bumped around here during the pheasant drives, don't we? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, we do the pheasant drives, they're always running through here. It's a nice bit of wood here, they, they tend to like this bit of wood, so. Little dot. Can, can you see it? There's a buck. Are you on it? Yeah. He's crashed down through here. There's all blood going down the bank here. Give it a couple of minutes and hopefully he'll lay down and that'll be it. I usually head and net shoot stuff, but that one I went for a good shot. Shoulder shot. That worked quite well, didn't we? Come around the corner. And we was watching a toe and she was trotting up towards us and as she was trotting up towards us, blow me the buck just trotted across, come across onto the track. And so it's come all the way through here, look. Right the way through. Blood pumping out all the way through here. Through here. Through here. Blood pumping out still. That's where he's got to. Lovely shot. They look so mangy this time of year as they're going from their, their winter coat through their summer. Right. Oh, there's a nice one to take out. Head's no good, but nice little one. Perfect job. When I first looked at him, he looked really big. Not head-wise, but actual animal-wise, he looked quite big. But now we've got him, he's, he's not that, that big, but a ah, pretty little thing, isn't he? Right. I think it's about two years, I think. Yeah, he might, might be, yeah, he's probably two-year-old. 
Uh, the, the one I got back at home, he's got he's got a big spike, two spikes coming out the front, real big ones. Um, he's he's a good six pointer, really good six pointer, and he's the coronets there. They're a lot bigger, twice the size of that, and he's a lot longer. See there, they live with the top of his ears. The one I've got, he's probably up here, he's well above the ears. But no, he's a nice one to take out. So. But they, like I say, they look, they look horrible this time of year when they're going from their winter coat into their summer coat. If you're going to do a, a shoulder mount, it's not the ideal time really. But you can always put head on to uh, another skin later on anyway, so it's not the end of the world. I'm going to wallop this out now, quick. And then go up and sit in the high seat for, well, what have we got, about three quarters of an hour? No, probably more than that, about an hour. I'll go and set up the high seat for now and see if we can do the keeper a favour and shoot the fox. Be nice, finish the evening off. Oh, we're changing bullets now. One of the foxes, I'm just putting plastic tip in. See how we get one of these. Just had a shot down there where it's disturbed any foxes that might come. I don't know, but it ain't disturbed anything over that way. So. Very Do I? I've got warm ears. Oh yeah. On the other side of the sprayed off field, Andy spots another buck. He's a nice animal, that one. He's come all the way along that edge of us, right? Wind's just right as well. Line away from him to us. <laughs> See, he's got a bit of a lopsided head. Left hand side as you look at it, or right hand side as he is. A bit shorter. And standing there. <laughs> so they just browse on, on the brambles and on the blackthorn. Marking his territory. Marking it with his horns and digging the ground. Perfect shot. Be a good head next year. He ain't sure now, is he? Nice shot, that. He come, come out of the wood over there. He just worked his way along. Oh, nice to watch him, really. I've got one, I'm not greedy. I'm happy with that. Be there for someone else or be there for next year or another day. Now he's got the hunt now. That's where we stopped and, and shot that one. We dragged him back up through. That's him barking now. He'll probably come running up here in a minute. You know something ain't right. Yeah, he's come back out. He's come back up to the edge of the wood now. It creeps into view, possibly curious about the small shape of the carcass below the high seat. 20 minutes later, it walks into the thicker woodland behind and we head home. It's been a great evening stalk with meat for the table and a little more time spent understanding our quarry. Another freezer pleaser from Mr Crow. Now something less pleasing, it's David on the Field Sports Channel News Stump. This is Field Sports Channel News. A six-year-old from Fife has had an outing in the Sun newspaper after revealing that she often goes fox shooting. Lexi Kelly often accompanies her father Graham when he's out shooting with night vision around the local countryside. Lexi says she loves it and she wants to shoot foxes one day and adds that foxes are her favourite toys. Will this be the general election that leads to repeal of the restrictions on hunting with hounds? Tony Blair's Hunting Act came into force in 2005. There has not been enough support in the House of Commons for a guaranteed repeal since then. But what looks like a Tory landslide means fox hunting and even coursing could soon be legal again. It's been a bumper opening to the New Zealand duck season. 
It opened at the weekend and there are multiple reports of hunters reaching their limits early, like the three lads in this film by Muzz308, who shoot eight each before 8am. The American NRA has had an ad designed to appeal to hunters. It is the dream of the animal rights fanatics to suppress your most natural connection to the earth. Antis have been calling hunters perverted and evil for years. Now the NRA is turning the tables and pointing out where antis are inhuman and insane. And finally, a man in New York allegedly killed a squirrel because it gave him a dirty look. Police released this photograph of the crossbow they say belongs to Jonathan Mangia, who's 27 and faces charges of prohibited use of a weapon and reckless endangerment. You are now up to date with Field Sports Channel News. Stalking the stories, fishing for facts. Thank you, David. Now for people who hunt or shoot or fish or even live in the English countryside, opinion is sharply split about HS2. Almost everybody in England thinks it's rubbish. David Cameron loves it. I went to find out what all the fuss is about. Cutting a wound across the English countryside, splitting kitchens, HS2 is also going to be a tragedy for hunting, shooting and fishing. We're on a shoot on the edge of the Chilterns where we've actually filmed in the past. Well, it has its own Act of Parliament now, so let the vandalism commence. I am devastated. Just, just the thought of it is, is, you know, is, is, is frightening, to be honest. We're at Charles's shoot on his farm in North Oxfordshire, where trains will one day roar past at 250 miles per hour. It, it really completely ruins the drive, and it's a shame. But in 2006, um, when I'd, I'd viewed the place, thought, what a glorious bit of country, you know, we hit, um, how on earth did we stumble upon this? And, and, but we'd got, it's got this great feature running through the middle of it in the form of a, a disused railway line. But in the event that that was to be reopened, that would be a, a crying shame and, and, and probably spoil the place from our perspective. So the solicitors checked it all out and, and came back to me and said, look, there's absolutely nothing we can find to, to suggest that there's a possibility of it being opened uh, or reopened or reinstated in any way. Um, and so, um, so I was quite relieved, but then I'd find out four years later that um, HS2 was coming right through the middle of, of the place and not actually on that line, but um, really crossing that, the, the, the disused railway line at, at perpendicular was, was just a crying shame. Another sport that's under threat from HS2 is fox hunting, with some of the most famous hunt countries cut in two. But I can only imagine it's going to be a real pain because, have, you know, yes, they can cross over bridges and, and things, but it, you know, that's just, it's, it's going to sever their country, and I can only imagine it's going to make, make life pretty difficult. Of course, I am, I am I'm negatively affected as an individual by um, HS2, by a railway line coming past my home, through the middle of my, my, my farm, through my business, um, and that's, of course, a great, great shame. But looking objectively at it, um, it's, it's a piece of infrastructure uh, that um, will be in place and, and, and for generations to come. Trains travelling at 250 miles an hour means no wildlife on the track. HS2 will be a wall for wildlife, eventually cutting the country in two. But there is a kind of train track that's good for wildlife, a disused one. The branch lines that civil servant Richard Beeching closed in the 1960s have been an unexpected bonus for British wildlife. The, uh, it's, it's used as a real sort of corridor for all sorts of, of, of animals and, and that's foxes, badgers, muntjac, fallow, roe, um, even magpies, everything, lots of things seem to go along it, but of course the game bird as well. So we, we release pheasants and partridges and they inevitably then just keep walking. They don't know when to stop because they're not quite sure where my boundary is, so they just keep walking. And especially when we've got our neighbours who feed them pretty hard, um, so we, they, they just walk along and keep going. Um, and we have a job to keep them, on, keep them on the place. The train will disappear into a tunnel underneath the Chilterns and out into the Colne Valley. That's where we meet carp angler Tony Booker. It's been a huge issue uh, locally, um, both electorally uh, and, and, and in just about every other sense for a very long period of time. So, uh, you know, yes, of, of course, I mean, the, you know, the local MPs um, are dead set against HS2, always have been. 
um, and, and obviously you know that's largely because of the impact that it has on the community um, and, and areas like this. It's very difficult actually to find two people within that organisation that have got the same understanding of, of, of what the future will, will hold uh, and you know ridiculous comments have been made by some of the people that we've had meetings with where for example um, they've suggested that we would still continue to be able to fish this lake during construction period. Absolute nonsense. You've been here for 20 years, if you were to look out over this in five years time and see either the viaduct or the, or the lake filled in completely and, and think to yourself, you know, no child will ever fish here again, how, how would you feel about that? As I said earlier on, I mean, it, it's, it's, a, it's a cliche word, but I would be devastated. Um, I am devastated, just, just the thought of it is, is, you know, is, is, is frightening to be honest. So why do the Tories cling to this project when, to the average Conservative voter, HS2 is more unpopular than Jeremy Corbyn? Martin is an angler and former Labour MP for Reading West. I'm not sure HS2 can be stopped, but we know for sure it's going to do damage to our rivers. Uh, we, know, we know that because the government have admitted uh, that the tunnelling required for HS2 is going to damage chalk aquifers, aquifers that feed rivers like the, the Colne and the Chess and the Misbourne. Uh, we know it's going through areas of uh, special scientific interest, it's damaging ancient woodlands. Um, and I don't think it accords with the 25-year environment plan that the government have, have, have published. The government have made it perfectly clear they intend to leave the environment in a better state than they found it. I can't see they're going to do that with HS2. The government are legally obliged through the European Water Framework Directive uh, to leave our rivers in, in, in a better ecological state. They're certainly not going to do that to this river if HS2 goes through as currently, currently programmed. Countryside like this is not put here for your benefit by the railway companies or even the conservation bodies. It is for hunting and shooting. When HS2 comes, the animals and birds that live here will not be rehomed by the local council. They will be lost. If your sport is affected by HS2, please leave a comment below. It's hard to know what it will achieve, but if we can bring enough people together, we might still be able to make a difference to this lunacy line. It's an issue that's really not going to go away. Now, earlier on, we saw Crow tidying up Roebuck around a pheasant shoot. Another pheasant shooting job to do is summer dog training. Any retriever wants to retrieve. He wants to rush out and chase what you throw for him and bring it back. And what my job as a trainer is to do is to teach him to be steady. So it all becomes about timing, my timing for when he goes to pick the retrieve, not his timing. Um, and you need to teach that very carefully, very quietly, very patiently, lack of distraction. Absolutely, first of all, just do it with one dog. What then happens, 1st of September comes for me and I take that young dog shooting. And for the first month or two, he's pretty good and pretty sensible, and I'm very careful, and I don't do anything wrong, and he sits there quietly. And then both he and I relax. And as the season wears on, I'm aware that my young dogs and the older ones just start pushing me a bit. The older dogs will see a bird come over that they know has been shot, and their bottoms lift off the ground and they're looking at it and they're looking at me and they're taking a step towards it. And I probably get a bit casual and give them the command to, to go and fetch it. So really I've given in to the dog's timing rather than mine. And if I'm unlucky, the young dog also picks up on that. And as I send an older dog, the young dog might even go too. Um, and out on the shooting field, you can't, you can't put that right. You can't suddenly start shouting and going and getting your dog and putting it on a lead and bringing it back to where it was. So you just have to take a deep breath and think, OK, that's a job to do through the spring and summer to make sure that steadiness is back again. So I'll do quite a bit of work of making sure the dogs are just listening to their name because their name always precedes them being sent for a retrieve, but also putting temptation in their way, sitting them up, throwing dummies around them, me going and picking them up just as I would have done with a young puppy then perhaps having two dogs together, sending one for a retrieve, making sure the other one's sitting, and gradually building up my confidence in them again so that I know they're rock steady 
and ready to go shooting again come September, which always comes around incredibly quickly. It's all about balance. What you don't want is to make anything too exciting again for the dog. It's just another day at the office and they have to be calm and patient. And if you've got a calm and patient gun dog, you can't go wrong. Now from the hardships of living in the south of England to the wider world of hunting and shooting on YouTube, it is Hunting YouTube. This is Hunting YouTube, which aims to show the best hunting and shooting videos that YouTube has to offer. Dog work dominates YouTube this week. Seven Valley Ratters are enjoying New Year's Eve at the chicken farm in this film, just out with 150 rats killed. On the other side of the world, Choppy Dog is about seven months old and has been hunting for just three weeks for free-range wild pork to feed the Clay Tall Stories gang in New Zealand. This film shows two hunts. And back in Europe, Lucas McAuliffe introduces a film that's partly in English and partly in Italian about shooting woodcock in Sicily over English setters. Back to 2016 is an extraordinary selection of driven game hunts, shots, misses and leave it alone by Guillaume Rieland, who only puts out a few films a year, always good. It's a similar idea on Hunting Fishing TV, which is after Wild Boar in this film, offering what it calls fragments of interesting moments. In the second part of German hunting magazine's Halali's trip to South Africa, the two editors are after Springbok and Impala, plus a spot of fly fishing. Merkel is sponsoring a new series on the Service UK channel. The first of the season has Owen Beardsmore and Clyde after an old trophy roebuck. And finally to Sweden where Kevin Olsen records an incredible day on the geese just posted on YouTube. That's it for this week. I have put all these films into a playlist for you. Click on the link or check this film's description. If you have a YouTube film you would like us to pop into the weekly top eights, email me the link charlie at fieldsportschannel.tv. Well, we are back next week. If you haven't done so already, please pop along to our website, fieldsportschannel.tv, the ideal place to subscribe to us on YouTube, to follow us on Facebook, to like or poke or tweet to us on Twitter, and of course, to pop your email into our register page so we can contact you via our newsletter about this show, Field Sports Britain. It's at 7pm UK time every Wednesday, and this has been Field Sports Britain. Good hunting, good shooting, good fishing, and goodbye. <laughs>